Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another signal processing tutorial. In today's video we're going to cover digital filters and a way of interpreting a visual representation of a digital filter. If you're partaking in a signal processing course you might have come across something like this before which is just a way of representing a digital filter. When we're talking about filters we're usually talking about their frequency response. In this case we want to find H of Z. We're given x of n and our output y of n and from this we could calculate h of n. Once we have h of n we'll define the relationship between h of n and h of z. Hopefully if you've been watching the previous videos you should have an intuitive understanding of exactly the relationship we have here. Remember z to the power of negative 1 is exactly the same as a one sample delay which would indicate n minus 1. So let's get started. Firstly we want to write out x of n and y of n both in terms of just w n and our scalars a1, a2, b0, b1, b2 and our delays. Let's start that now. Okay so let's calculate firstly our w n and then we'll calculate our y of n and we'll relate them to one another in order to get h of z. We have the signal coming in here to wn, but what is this signal? Well, we have one lot of x of n passing through plus this line here and this line here. So let's define those now. We have wn is equal to our x of n, our input, and this z to the power of negative 1 here is simply a one sample delay in the system. So how can we write that if we have n? Well, we can do plus as it's being added back into the system w of n minus 1, because that's just a sample from one turn ago. Then we also multiply that by our scalar a1. Then we also have this last loop to take care of where there's now a two sample delay as there's a minus one here, a minus one here, which will give us w n minus two, and then again scaled by a2. Okay, so we've got our equation for wn. Now let's take a similar approach to calculate y of n. First, we know y of n is equal to wn which is entering this note here and scaled by b0 then we also have the delay scaled by b1 and then we also have the double delay scaled by b2 just like before we'll write that again we have wn and then that's scaled by bo or b0 however you want to say it then we have plus wn and this time we're delayed by 1 and then that's scaled by b1 plus our last loop wn with a two sample delay and then that's scaled by b2 okay so we have our two equations one and two however they're both in terms of n and we need them in terms of z so what's the relationship between h of n and h of z. Well, as z to the power of negative 1 is the same as a delay, we can replace all of the x of n's and w's of n's minus 1's and 2's with x's and w's of z's. Okay, so our w of n becomes w of z and then our x of n simply becomes x of, you guessed it, z plus our a1 remains unchanged, a1 multiplied by w of z and then times by our delay, which is simply z to the power of negative 1, because that indicates a one sample delay. And then to that, we add a2 w of z, and then z to the power of negative 2, because in this case, it's a two sample delay. We can repeat this process for the y of n, which will give us. OK, so we now have all of the components that we need to calculate our h of z. 
Okay, so we can isolate x sub z by subtracting a1 wz z to the power of negative 1 plus a1 wz z to the power of negative 2 from both sides of this equation. On the right hand side we'll have w of z minus a1 w of z z to the power of negative 1 minus a2 w of z z to the power of negative 2 and that's all equal to x of z. Okay, so you might be able to notice that we have a wz in all of our terms on the left hand side. Why don't we bring that out the front of the equation and while we're at it let's flip the sides so that we have x of z on the left. We'll have x of z is equal to w of z outside the brackets and then inside the brackets we have 1 because that will leave 1 minus a1 z to the power of negative 1 minus a2 z to the power of negative 2. We can do the same with our y equation which will give us y of z is equal to w z and then inside the brackets b0 plus b1 z to the power of negative 1 plus b2 z to the power of negative 2. Excellent, so we're making a lot of progress now we have w of z in both of our equations and now we can cancel them out nicely to calculate our h of z. Let's do that now. h of z is equal to y of z divided by x of z. And that's equal to our w of z. I'm sorry that these look like twos, some of these, hopefully uh, following along nicely. And then all of that multiplied by b naught plus b1 z to the power of negative 1 plus b2 z to the power of negative 2 and then all of that is divided by w of z 1 minus a1 z to the power of negative 1 minus a2 z to the power of negative 2 we can see here our wz's cancel and we're left with simple scales and shifts of the input and output signal Okay, so let's just rewrite that to finish off, hopefully so that's very clear. We have h of z, a frequency response of our digital filter, which can be given by b0 plus b1 z to the power of negative 1 plus b2 z to the power of negative 2 divided by 1 minus a1 z to the power of negative 1 minus a2 z to the power of negative 2. Hopefully you've seen from the previous video that this is in the standard form for our digital filter. In our next video, we'll go over an implementation of this, hopefully to make it very clear for you. As always guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you had any problems at all, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And I'll see you guys in the next one.